Season's greetings, everyone. Welcome back. Today, a special edition of Bottle Talk for you. I've picked four of my favorite must-have wines for the holiday season for you and your mouth, and I've also partnered up with my friends at Marquee Wines. So when you use my wine code, you'll be able to save on these wines and your entire wine purchase. We're gonna go to France, Austria, Oregon, and Italy. Are you ready? Welcome to Bottle Talk, holiday edition. Welcome back, wine lovers. Today, on a special expanded edition of Bottle Talk, I'm gonna go through four must-have wines for your house and your mouth that you need to have on hand this holiday season. And yes, this is a collaboration with my good friends down at Marquee Wine Cellar. So use my wine code, pick up one, or honestly, all four of these bottles, because tell me you don't deserve it after the year we've just had. And you'll get a discount on all the wines that you buy for that purchase. So no wasting time, let's get right to it. Wine number one, we're gonna to go to Italy and we're doing Gansia Non-Vintage Brut. Now, this is a sparkling from Italy. It's not Prosecco, which traditionally would come from the Veneto region. This comes from Piedmont. That's where Barolo is king. 1848, Carlo Gansia went to Champagne, learned everything he needed to know about how to make it, came back to Piedmont, started making this, and bam, 170 years later, it's in your mouth. So. What's it taste like? Because that's really what's important, right? Uh, well, very pretty. Very pretty, walked in the room wearing lace, doilies, that kind of pretty. Wow, lime zest, honeysuckle, Granny Smith apples, tangerine peels. Sounds good, gotta get it in the mouth. Oh! She's so pretty. Now, so, a little almond, a little lemon custard on the palate. The acid is vibrant and alive. The wine is very social, is probably the best word I could think of it. Thinking about food for a wine like this, you're thinking salads that have vinaigrette dressings, maybe asparagus grilled with some goat cheese. Um, for sure, your basic charcuterie platters and all of its accoutrement that would definitely go there personally i think this would also pair incredibly well while you're wearing your christmas onesie opening presents christmas morning starting your madness of mimosas um, and at this price when you factor value in it's honestly an incredibly satisfying wine kind of like cracking the sugar on top of a creme brulee okay um all right so we're gonna go into right into the next wine uh, wine number two, I am so in lust with her. Oh my God. We're talking Weingut Stack Krems Losterassen Gruner Veltliner from the Nieder Osterich in Austria. A mouthful to say for sure, but I promise you it's a mouthful of wine that you're honestly going to love. So if you've never had Gruner Veltliner before, awesome. Think dry crisp Rieslings. If you like Chablis, if you like, I don't know, crisp Pinot Grigios, Gruner Veltliner definitely needs to get on your radar. So, right to the nose. Wow, it's incredibly juicy on the nose, very, very floral. Melon, apple flesh, uh, pink grapefruit, almost a ruby grapefruit. Holy smokes, Asian pear, a little slate. Let's get it in the mouth. Oh man, yeah, lust is a really good word for a white like this. My gosh, a little more wet stone and slate on the palate, kind of a beeswax quality to it. Sits really kind of, you know, it's dry, but it covets a medium plus acidity, so that really keeps it honest and great for the table. 
Uh, I'm thinking fish, but leaner style fish, like a Arctic char, salmon, halibut, something like that. Or if you're doing maybe like a carrot soup, squash soup, even some coconut curries, you can get away with this kind of a wine for sure. Yeah, just so lusciously juicy, my gosh. A little preserved lemon through the finish, kind of a daikon radish as well, which sounds stranger than it actually is. This is such a delicious wine. I think you'll have no problem finding this wine at the intersection of Oh My God and More Please. It's really that kind of wine. So we're going to go right into... Wow. Okay, so now we're going to Oregon. This is Eversham Wood 2018 Willamette Valley Pinot Noir. Some people say Willamette Valley. They'd be wrong. The way I was always taught to remember it, it's Willamette, damn it. Don't forget that. Get that on your radar. So, Pinot Noir, the Heartbreak Grape. This is the brainchild of the Rainy family. Uh, Rainy family, sorry. Uh, they started in 1986. They're sustainable. They do mostly de uh, Pomard clones, I believe, for a majority of this. Somewhere around 4,000 cases made. And Oregon is such the Pinot Noir homeland. I don't think there's any other region in the world so dedicated to one particular grape as Oregon is. Oh, a concentration of black cherry and rhubarb and strawberry, crushed raspberry, a little herbal note, and definitely a little bit of cinnamon there. Okay, right to the palate. Son of a nutcracker, that's delicious. Holy smokes. The concentration really comes through, for sure. And we're talking cinnamon, herbal, kind of purple flowers and mushroom, a little mocha dust in there. Ooh, zippy acidity that keeps it ultra fresh and perfect for the table. I think it's an ultimate pairing to any fare that you've got going on a turkey table. Like turkey stuffing, mashed potatoes, Brussels sprouts, all that kind of stuff. The whole fare that you have on your holiday table. This wine's definitely going to satiate all the palates at the table. About 10% of this particular wine gets some new oak. Clocks in at 13% alcohol, which I love. I'm tired of seeing these 15% alcohol Pinot Noirs. At the end of the day, a really, just a charismatic wine that kind of goes anywhere and does anything. All right. On to wine number four. Are you ready? We're going to bring it home strong with a gorgeous bottle of champagne. So this is R. Pouillon. Brut non-vintage reserve. So this particular champagne falls into a popular category called grower champagne. Essentially what that means is they own their own vineyards, grow their own grapes, harvest their own grapes, they make their own wine. Everything A to Z is all done by themselves. Um, they, you know, most grower champagne houses can do anywhere between four to 8,000 cases annually. When you compare that, someone like Fufico would make about 19 million bottles in a year. That's pretty insane. And grower champagnes are just, I find, more terroir driven, more site specific. Um, and honestly, dollar to dollar, it's about the same as your Vouve or Moet or Paul Roger, those kind of things. Um, but honestly, I personally, for me, this delivers about 10 times the value. So, that being said, they're located in a Primer Cru vineyard called Marul sur I, and that's in the Val de Marne. Uh, if you're not familiar with that region, you may be familiar with some of the big brothers in that neighborhood. Biacart Salmon is there, Philip Anod is there, um, making their clothing was and such. So, ready? Oh, I didn't want to finish inhaling that. Holy smokes. Um, baked apple, like right out of the oven, nothing on it, just a baked apple in its skin still. I get star fruit. Green peach, quince, apricot stones. Wow, what a gorgeous champagne. Brioche, pecan dust. I have to taste this. Wow, okay. Almond, stone, like wet crushed stone. I get a little bit more honeyed chalk, white button mushrooms. It's medium to fuller bodied in style, to be sure. Um, since about 2003, these guys have been biodynamic as well, which is the highest form of organic farming. Um, and honestly, wow. 
this is a, a gorgeous champagne, my God. Pear oysters, pear poached lobster. Um, you can easily get away with some lighter white meats like chicken or veal with something like this and a mild light cream mushroom sauce. Oh, that would be divine. I gotta taste one more time. All right. Yeah. This wine is not barefoot on dirt roads. This wine is stiletto heels on marble. You got to treat yourself to something like this. Listen, we've got Gansia, Sac Crims, Eversham, all these fun things. Um, treat yourself. You deserve it. Just to wrap things up, I want to say thank you to every single one of you for all your support and your feedback and your attention through 2020. I have a lot of fun doing this for you and I'm looking forward to all the amazing things that are coming in 2021. Make sure you drink and enjoy responsibly this holiday season. Thank you. And until next time, I'm Robert Stomachuk. Thanks for watching.